Hi, and welcome to the introduction to the Nautel RF Toolkit, specifically about HD Radio Power Calculator, a new tool available on the Nautel website. This is a webinar in which, in, for just about the next 20 minutes, we're going to try to answer your questions and lead you through this important and powerful tool so that you have a better understanding on how to use it. And uh, let's see if I can click to the right page. So I'm Chuck Kelly, Nautel's Director of Sales here in Hackett's Cove, Nova Scotia, and we're joined by our guest Sam Goldman of NPR Labs down in Washington, who's the Manager of Software Development and Research Products. Can you hear me, Sam? Yes, I can. How are you doing? The, mir the miracle of radio. This is wonderful. <laughs> so what we're going to talk about today is what's the RF, uh, Nautel RF Toolkit, where do we find the HD Radio Power Calculator, how to read the results, and then some questions about what do you do with those results. And then we do have, if we have time, we'll try to take your questions and comments. You'll notice over the right hand of, the sc of your screen uh, on, the, uh, on the Citrix uh, uh, webinar program, there is a place to type in questions. Feel free to type in questions at any time. And if we have time at the end of the broadcast, we will try to do our best to, to take some of your questions. And uh, that's, that's where the questions can go in. So what is the Nautel RF Toolkit? As the title infers, it's a set of tools designed to help both technical and non-technical people easily understand what are certainly complex systems. The calculator was developed by our friends at NPR Labs for public radio stations in the United States who wanted to know how much HD sideband power they could use. Nautel hosts the tool for commercial broadcast stations. And while all of this is based on very solid engineering principles, and these are really smart guys, these tools cannot replace the services of a qualified consultant. So the first question is, why would we bother to increase HD sideband power? And it all boils down to signal to noise. This is what the spectrum of a HD radio FM station looks like. And the traditional sidebands were at initially were 20 dB below carrier. And that they consist of one sideband on the lower frequency side of the analog and one uh, sideband on the higher frequency side of analog. And if the noise environment was as we see it here, all is hunky-dory. There are no problems. The problem is that noise, noise floors rise. And if, as long as those sidebands are peeking out of the noise, we probably have pretty good HD radio reception. The problem is what happens if, they, if the noise level rises above. And, and where this happens in many cases, and, and Sam, this is, uh, I'd be interested in your comment on this, is, is inside buildings. Because inside buildings we have lots of noise sources like computers and fluorescent lights and all sorts of things that impact the reception. And there's some attenuation of the building to the FM signal. Sam? That's exactly what I was going to say, actually, is sure there is a lot of noise inside buildings. You have uh, power running around in the walls and you have uh, you know, electrical devices, but it's also building penetration loss. So that uh, in addition to the noise floor rising, you're actually going to see the whole FM band kind of coming down um, closer to the, the noise floor as well. Because who knows, if you're sitting in an office building, it's made of brick, it's made of steel, all of these things are going to make it harder to pick up uh, a good signal. That's right. And, and so what happened is that the FCC and the broadcasters and Ubiquity cooperated together and came up with a proposal which allowed all broadcasters, pretty much, to go to minus 14 or a 6 dB increase, I'm sorry, a 4 dB increase, no, a 6 dB increase of the minus 20 dB level, and some stations um, to go as high as minus 10, depending on the interference level. And they could also, if they so chose, and the opportunity uh, existed, do it asymmetrically. That is, one sideband might be at a higher level than the other sideband. And the FCC came out with rather complicated rules as to how to determine how high you could go, which depended on the, the protected contours of the stations closest to you, which are both above you in frequency and below you in frequency. Sam, you want to try to explain this screen for us? Yeah, so without getting too complicated, um, we are actually involved in, uh, you know, developing the ruling to uh, regulate this based on our ACES project, which I think we did in 2008 or 9. Um, 
But anyway, the idea is that a station can basically go as far to minus 10, as close to minus 10 as they can until they start uh, in you know, broadcasting too much HD and they'll be hurting the analog reception of their first adjacent neighbors. So you can see from this picture here, on the left we have the proponent station, on the right we have the protected station, which we um, can't interfere with. And the idea basically being um, that as we raise the uh, sideband, either on the upper or the lower side, um, it's going to penetrate further into the uh, first adjacent uh, reception zone. And if the first adjacent neighbor is a much smaller station then, um, or further away, then we can raise the HD sideband more uh, on that side. If, it's a, if the station is closer or has a bigger uh, 60 dBU protected conduit, actually it's 54, minus 54 dBU. Uh, so this one is the conduit. minus 54, and there's the minus 57, and there's the minus 60. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, it gets into the, the contours for um, interference versus uh, the protected reception zone. So anyway, uh, point being, though, that if the station is closer or has a larger contour because they're broadcasting with more power, that is protected. The FCC is you know, protecting them, so the HD sideband power on that side wouldn't be able to go all the way up. And there's a complicated formula which we derived based on listener tests to figure out at what point it really becomes a problem. And, uh, you know, worst case scenario, everyone is allowed to go up to minus 14 dBC on both sides. Except, grandfa hopefully if, except grandfathered mega power stations, right? Uh, yeah, of course. Um, but hopefully, uh, if you have some leeway on one side or both, then um, raising the power on, on one side all the way to minus 10 may not be quite as good as getting both sides up to minus 10, but it certainly is an improvement. Because that's, an the way that that's an important point, Sam, because the data on one set of sidebands is more or less redundant with the data on the other set of sidebands. So even if only one of the set of sidebands is, is above the noise floor, um, you, you can have good reception. Absolutely. Yeah, the way that the receivers have been made, the way Ubiquity engineered the whole system, um, if your receiver can get a lock uh, on one side, it can still function pretty well, even if the other side is trash or below the noise floor. Now, the really good news is if, if people that are watching this right now, if they look at this uh, slide and then these, these DBU contours and things like that, and their eyes are crossing, we fixed that. We made it really easy, and, and that was the magic of what uh, NPR Labs has accomplished. So let's first let's talk about getting right to the calculator. Yeah, if you want to follow along with this and then look at it on, on your page and, and kind of tile your screens or whatever, feel free. Um, but if you click, um, uh, if you go to www.notel.com, and we'll do it, slash RF Toolkit, uh, you can log into this thing. Now, there's, there, there is a password that is required, um, but uh, I will show you how this works. Hopefully everybody can see this. And I'm going to go back to the uh, Nautel page and log out just so I can show people what you've got to do. So I'm now logged out, and I'm going to come down to right here, this link, go to the RF Toolkit. And now it's going to give me an option of logging in. Now I have logged in before, and my little uh, uh, Chrome installation here is, is, is keeping cookies, so I can go ahead and log in. But if you don't have a password here, you just register on this tab and give us a username and an email address and a password and you'll get an email back and be able to confirm and you'll have yourself a free account. So that's, that's easily done and so you just hit log in and once you're logged in it recognizes you and then you can click on the NPR HD radio calculator. So now Sam, why don't you show us what we're supposed to do when we get to this screen. It looks pretty simple. Just one, yeah, put in call letters. We're hoping that, yeah, we can keep it so that uh, it's hard to screw it up. Um, so let's take an example of a station first that is hemmed in. There are lots of uh, first adjacent neighbors. And uh, believe it or not, one that came to mind for me right away was WNYC. WNYC. Um, OK. So I have typed in WNYC. And bravo, there you go. That's it. 
And so as we can see here, uh, at the, the very first box where it says IBOC Candidate Station, that pretty mm -hmm. much gives you all the information you need to know at a glance. It tells you your call sign, the city of license, uh, the FCC license status, and the channel, of course. But then over here on the right, it gives us uh, the, the basically the max level that we can uh, put our HD radio sidebands to without interfering with our first adjacent neighbors. So in this case, uh, it's calculated that minus 14 DBC for both sides. Um, and if you're wondering, well, hmm, maybe you're thinking, oh, I know my uh, the area of the country my station's in, and maybe this isn't the case. Well, that brings us down to the box below, where yep. we, we actually get a station by station uh, tabular result. And so we can see here there are three stations that are coming into play and in limiting WMYC. Um, well, actually, really just two because I'll get to that in a minute. But if you look at the first station, WZMX in Hartford, Connecticut, right. um, we can see over on the left that, that is a lower sideband station. So, so that frequency uh, be the next channel down from WNYC. Yeah, exactly. So if, if WMYC is 230, then this is at 229. Um, we can then go across and get some information so you can look it up in the FCC's database uh, more easily. Um, and then we see here, uh, bearing to WMYC from the protected station, so we know what direction we're uh, pointed to. Well, in this case, it's coming from WZMX, um, right. and, it, and it shows us the essentially the uh, contour, the F5010 protected contour or interference protected contour uh, at the location of WMYC's uh, 60 dBU contour, and then. You know, there's some extra information here, but it basically shows you at the last point there uh, that that results in um, uh, HD sideband on that side of minus 14 dBC. So what, um, I, what I see here, if I look at the next line as well, I see that if it wasn't for WZMX, I could actually have taken that up to minus 10. Absolutely. Because WSTW isn't, we wouldn't be causing interference to STW to the point where we couldn't go to minus 10. Absolutely, and um, okay. yeah, that's exactly how it works. And then we we see there uh, the last station is on the upper side, uh, so that would be channel two thirty one, and that again is right there in Philadelphia. So it's it's uh, kind of hemming in WMIC to minus fourteen on both sides. Um, okay. If we want to look at uh, let's look, let's look at the opposite example right now. If you type in in uh, San Francisco, you're actually in in California somewhere, KQEI, I believe that station uh, hmm. is the opposite case. Where, yeah, you can see oh, right yeah. there in the top box, uh, both sides go all the way up to minus 10. And it shows Great. the closest uh, stations on the upper and the lower sideband, but they're both far enough away that um, it's not a problem. So just for fun, I've been sitting here thinking about what has to go into this because it looks deceptively simple on the screen. But what you've got to be doing in the background is you've got to know the location, power level, coverage area, that whole thing for every station in the United States, every FM station. Mm -hmm. And then you've got to have a digitized terrain database, and you've got to be working that and, and calculate the coverage out to various points dynamically as we put in the colors. Well, actually, uh, what we've done so that the results can come up so quickly is we've actually done pre-computing. Um, okay. We do have a, it is based on a terrain database, and we do have the uh, up-to-date, or every month we update the engineering statistics for all the FM stations. Uh, and then what we go ahead and do is we find, if we, t you know, we, we loop through all the stations, we, we look at one that we're, uh, you know, considering the proponent, and then, um, what we do is we we say okay on the on the first adjacent neighbors upper and lower let's do a search for all the stations within a certain radius because realistically we go out pretty far those are the only ones that are going to cause problems sure and we then actually find the, the direct line between the two and calculate the FCC contours using that terrain data um, which are actually what are used in the ruling to determine these ratios so we go ahead and we I, I believe the database we have, uh, every time we go through, through and, and pre-compute it, has th tens of thousands of uh, entries because it has to, you know, some of these stations just have two that come up here, um, and then some have more like 15, and we actually are, we cut it off so that only the 
more pertinent results hit the screen. Uh, you know, if you already see that you're limited by three stations on the lower side, we don't need to show you all seven that were calculated. But yeah, that the way mind boggles with the amount of computation. Somebody must yeah. have worn out their slide rule. <laughs> well, that's that's why we do the pre-computing because smart. Uh, otherwise, you'd be sitting there for a long time while it was uh, calculating. And in this way, you can punch in your call letters and have a have an answer in a few seconds. So it's it's pretty simple. Getting from answer or from from the call letters to the answer, it's just seconds, and you've got all the information. Sam, let's talk about just for a second about um, what people can do with this information. Can they go out and f should they go out and file with the FCC based on this or you know, I, in my opinion, there there should be um, uh, the intervention of some sort of consulting engineering service before yeah, you buy an equipment and, and, and filing with this. We certainly do uh, recommend that you talk with a consulting engineer um, before going ahead and filing because these results are calculated uh, for the entire FM band and uh, things do change. Things always change. That's why we update it every month. Um, but in addition to that, the FCC uh, contours aren't always perfect circles, and so sometimes there are, you know, abnormalities that can affect the results. Um, these are a pretty good estimate, and I, I do stress pretty good. But every once in a while, things do come out a little differently than than the estimate shows. So, so call up a, a consultant, but also bear in mind that NPR Labs is willing to be your consultant. Absolutely, we we do. Uh, you know, for hire very uh, affordably. We can notice we can a neat do... little link right up here. So right on the right page, on the same page as you've got your results, it says ready of, uh, ready to file. NPR Labs can help, and that'll take you to further information about how you could include NPR Labs uh, in your process. Yeah, and we can uh, generate very affordable uh, reports that are specific to your station to figure out uh, exactly what you need to do and and help you actually file with the FCC. Okay, so um, before we get to questions, I just want to mention that next week we have another webinar um, on a similar topic. This one is RF coverage tool that we've developed uh, in cooperation with Mr. Roger Kude. And, uh, and, and that tool um, is, we're going to talk about next week, another free tool, but it works worldwide between 60 degrees north and 60 degrees south and uh, allows you to see contours of your station to play around with it a little bit and get an idea of what would happen if I raised my antenna 100 feet or 200 feet or something like that. So uh, keep in mind that we've got a, a same time next week, uh, another webinar, and uh, again it's free and the tool is free. And uh, now let's see, uh, there's more information at these uh, locations. You can see uh, the, the NATO Waves newsletter, uh, other webinars that have been canned. This this webinar is going to be available for you to download and, and watch uh, any other time. If, if uh, a friend of yours you want to have see this, you can uh, go to the webinars uh, page indicated uh, up here, and then you can uh, click on that, and, and, um, and you can see the webinars uh, at any time. We also have YouTube videos and the Nautel store, and uh, we're ready to help. Now let's, let's see, see if I can see if there have been any questions. I don't believe there have. Wait, there is, actually. Okay. So we have a, um, a question, and it says, does IBOC mean that we can transmit in both system and analog? Uh, system HD and analog. Yes, that's the nice thing about HD radio is that it is a a simultaneous system broadcasting both analog and digital at the same time and contained within the same uh, FM channel. Do you want to answer that, Sam? Anything more to add to that? Yeah, no, it's actually uh, the way it works uh, a little bit more specifically is that the, um, and this is kind of why the power calculator is important, is your analog is the same as always, and that way analog receivers have no problem, but the HD is actually being broadcast slightly above and slightly below. Uh, we saw that on the slide previously. Mm -hmm. um, and so there, that does get into situations where if not taken care of properly and managed, you can have interference uh, to your neighbor's analog uh, signals. But of course, if you follow some guidelines that we've worked out with the FCC, that shouldn't really be a problem. But it's great. You can have analog and digital broadcast at the same time. And one more question. Does the tool show results for the high power grandfathered stations? Um, the tool at the current time does not. So if, if that is the case, 
uh, we really should go to a consulting engineer. Yeah, there's only a handful of those in the in the United States, isn't that right? Yeah, uh, I think it's yeah a few dozen. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, okay. not not many considering that they're thousands and thousands of FM stations. So. Absolutely. Well, Sam, I want to thank you very much for being a part of our webinar today, and thank you for bringing this tool to our customers and broadcasters in the United States. And and uh, if people have questions, feel free to send them to sales at nautel.com, and either I or, or, or I'll forward it to Sam, and uh, we'll, we'll answer the question. For now, I'm Chuck Kelly for, uh, for Sam Golan. Thank you very much for being a part of this. Good day. All right. Thanks.